For our Hazmat Ops students, this is going to be an overview of State JPR number 7. Specifically, it's going to be a rundown of how to properly apply foam using the ProPack. Now, there are several means of mixing and applying foam in firefighting, but for our application for this class and for your state test, you'll be tested using the ProPack. So this is going to be an overview of what that piece of gear is, in the three fundamental ways of applying firefighting foam for hazmat application. Task Force Tips, the TFT makes the ProPack. It's a foam injection and application system. It's used for wildland applications and for hazmat. Obviously with this being a hazmat ops class, we're gonna keep our eye toward hazmat, but just know that it does have multiple applications in the firefighting realm. Its fundamental use is for quick application of the low to mid-expansion classes of foam, Class A, AFFF, or alcohol-resistant foams, used for firefighting or simply for vapor suppression in the hazmat arena. It has quick reference directions on the side if you're ever in doubt or you ever forget about how to set it up. You're not responsible for the charts on here, knowing gallonages or pump pressures but we're just making you aware that there are some directions readily available to you on the system itself. As part of your JPR, specifically item number two, you're going to have to make a decision based on nozzle. Like in anything we do in firefighting, you're applying that nozzle to, to your mission. Based on the situation you're given, the scenario, and your end goal for that product, you're going to make a decision based on reach, penetration, and what kind of foam blanket you want to lay down. TFT provides you with three nozzles along with the red hose. We apply the red hose first, then we choose one of the three nozzles. Starting from left to right, the smallest one gives you the smallest orifice, so it's going to give you the greatest reach and penetration. Used more in the wildland arena for punching through debris, getting in a deep-seated fire in a log or in the duff or in a brush. The second Still going to give you some good reach, not quite as small an orifice, but that smooth bore nozzle is going to still be designed for reach. The one that's most applicable for our purposes, for a liquid fuel fire or for vapor suppression purposes in hazmat, is the larger aspirating nozzle. It's going to give you those large aerated bubbles that will allow you to form a thick foam blanket. Reviewing your IFSA material, firefighting foam needs four things. It needs a foam concentrate, it needs water, it needs air, and it needs a, a means of mechanically agitating that foam solution. Now when we talk about mechanical agitation, picture when you put hand soap on your hands, it requires some friction and some agitation to form those bubbles. Same with shampoo on your hair, same with putting dish soap in a pot. Sometimes you need to open up that, that fog on your... Uh, sink nozzle in order to create foam bubbles. Same application here. We're putting a foam solution through a mostly water-based system, so we need a means of whipping that up. We need a means of creating agitation. That's achieved with the large aspirating nozzle. That mesh screen and those large air intakes on the back are going to allow for a more aerated finished product that gives you a big foam blanket. We proportion our foam concentrate using a knob on top. The green corresponds with Class A foam, which is proportioned from 0.1% to 1% using that knob. We can also flip that knob around and use it for Class B foam concentrates as well, from 1% to 6%. TFT has its own unique proprietary attachment system, but all it is is a simple push and quarter turn in order to attach all nozzles and hoses. By default, our inlet is set up to be supplied off of a 1-inch booster line, but using an adapter, we can marry up with a 1.5-inch coupling as well. And on the diagram, you can see where water goes in, and we get our foam solution out. So we would attach our 1-inch or 1.5-inch water supply at the inlet, down below, we see where our foam concentrate goes. 
It's a two and a half gallon reservoir for class A or B foam. Simple screw top. We pour our foam in, reapply that lid. And then up above we see a rotating valve handle. This is what allows us to adjust that flow once we have water in and foam concentrate ready to come out. We're going to first attach that red hose with that push and quarter turn connection. Then we make a decision based on nozzle. Do we want the reach and penetration of the smaller smoothbore nozzles or do we want the larger aerated foam product of that aspirating nozzle? Once we've made the decision, we attach our nozzle to the end of the hose and we're ready to apply foam. First, a basic overview of how this system works. We have foam concentrate down in a reservoir that's introduced using an eductor, also known as a pickup tube, that silver cylinder you see, works just like a straw. So the water that comes in via our booster line runs directly through the system, through the handle. The pressure creates a draw, creates a vacuum known as the Venturi effect, which is going to draw that raw concentrate up into the proportioner. It's then injected into that water stream through the proportioner at the concentration we've set using the knob, and then the end product that comes out our hose through our nozzle is that foam solution at the desired concentration. Three basic applications for applying foam in the firefighting and hazmat arena. First, the roll-on method. We very rarely want to apply foam or any water stream directly to our product. We're going to create backsplash. We're going to create a larger mess. So we want a means of applying our foam product without disrupting our spill. So using the roll-on method, we direct that foam stream to the ground first toward the forward edge of that liquid spill or our fire and allow that blanket to truly roll onto the product, onto the surface of that fuel. The second method is the bank down method. This is when we have a vertical surface that we can direct our stream off of. So we can use a wall or the side of this tank pictured here, direct our stream into it and allow that accumulation to fall down onto our product. Again, not, a, not applying that stream directly to the product. And if neither of those are reasonable because of access, we can rain down our product. We can rain down our foam concentrate and solution. Here we'll give more of a visual representation of all three methods using the ProPack in real time. So we have a water supply established, which you will not be responsible for on test day. We apply the hose, make a nozzle selection, make sure our water supply is hooked up, check that proportioning knob. We're going to approach from uphill and upwind, just like we always do in firefighting and hazmat. Our firefighter is going to make an adjustment using that rotational valve and start applying foam using the bank down method. It's directing that stream onto a vertical surface, in this case the fence, and allowing that foam product to roll down onto our imaginary product. Next up, we'll have them, re have them demonstrate the rain down method, simulating a product that's on the other side of that fence, such as an elevated container. Now you'll note that when you're flowing a foam product, it's susceptible to the wind taking it away. You'll see the flag whipping in the background. You can see that stream isn't making it very far before it's directed by the wind. Something to consider when you're choosing your method of application. 
And lastly, he'll demonstrate the roll-on method. So we gave him a, an imaginary product on the ground. He's directing that stream into the ground, allowing that product to accumulate and roll forward onto the surface of our product. Another perspective, we adjusted our pump pressure and our concentration in order to give us a higher quality foam blanket. You'll see that demonstrated here. You'll notice that that end foam solution is adhering a little better to that vertical surface. We're getting a better foam blanket accumulation on the ground just by making an adjustment in concentration using that proportioner knob. Because we are doing this for test day, we need to identify those critical criteria. There are certain things on a state test that you must say or do. You could do everything else great, but if you miss those critical criteria, you risk failing the station. So be sure to verbalize that you are avoiding disturbing that foam blanket once it's laid down. Do it, but also say it to make sure they understand. Don't find yourself like this guy in the picture, standing in the middle of your product, potentially disrupting it, and now feeding oxygen right back into a product that you're trying to separate from the oxygen supply. All that suppression effort you achieved by laying down a foam blanket is disturbed if you disturb that blanket. So make sure you verbalize that you're taking measures not to disturb that foam blanket. A quick rundown of your JPR. Again, approach from uphill and upwind. Say that out loud. Let your proctor know that you're setting your nozzle to the correct pattern. You're choosing a method from the bank down, roll on, or rain down methods. Verbalize that you're not disturbing the foam blanket and then safely exit that hazardous area. Some advice for success. If you follow these steps, you're going to pass with flying colors. Again, verbalize. Approaching from uphill and upwind. Setting the proper pattern. My advice is to aim your stream away until you see the desired foam solution that you want to apply. That keeps you from creating a bunch of backsplash by directing your stream into that product. And it avoids an unnecessary accumulation of water that's going to expand your 5-gallon problem into a 50-gallon problem. So aim it away until you see that foam product you want to see and then direct it on your product. Verbalize which of the three methods you're going to use. Let those proctors know that you know your stuff. Verbalize the three and let them know which one or which two or three you're going to be applying. <clears throat> Again, verbalize that you're avoiding disturbing that foam blanket. Never turn your back on the foam blanket because if it does get disrupted and your liquid fuel fire kicks up again, you're putting yourself at risk. So always back away from it. Verbalize to your proctor that you're safely exiting the area. Remember that you're not responsible for the water supply piece you're only there for the application of foam using those three methods, proper use of the pro pack, and verbalizing all those critical criteria. If you work safely, work efficiently, follow these steps and make yourself familiar with all those steps of the JPR, you'll pass this with no problem on test day.